joy. Hallelujah. He lead me to someone. Call them up and have a word of prayer with them. Call them up and have a word of prayer. Healing comes or deliverance or whatever may come. And all of a sudden you hang up the phone. You feel so good. You feel the joy of the Lord. You're just ready to go and get another assignment. Why? Because you were led and you obeyed the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I saw your upon the Lord. is one of those uh, precious is one of the precious gifts that God gives to his people peace and today somebody's going to receive some wonderful peace from God because of Christ our Lord yeah you can go ahead and give thanks to God hallelujah in advance um, <clears throat> but let me just give a little um, info concerning the biblical um, connotation of peace. And just a little bit of uh, info concerning it. Um, the primary and basic idea of the biblical word of peace in the Old Testament is shalom. In the New Testament is Irene. And the basic idea is completeness, soundness, and wholeness. When, when the, uh, in the Old Testament, when they thought, Old and New Testament, when that whole idea of peace is dealing with completeness, <clears throat> soundness, and wholeness. Paul <clears throat> said in the church at Colossians, you are complete in him, in Christ. Anybody remember that scripture? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has made you whole, wholeness. So that which Jesus gives, and even in the Old Testament, that which God gave to his people, peace was just so precious. And it is said, I didn't search it out, but it said that in the New Testament epistles, peace is at the beginning and the end of every one of these epistles except First John and uh, James. So even among the Semites, that word peace is just like a common word, peace. Again, the idea of completeness, soundness, wholeness and it speaks of dismissal in first Samuel, Samuel Eli said to Hannah after he had prayed for her after she had prayed and put her petition before the Lord uh, he prayed for her and after he thought she was apparently drunk and she said no I'm a woman of sorrow and so uh, he said well you go in peace and the Lord grant your petition. So it's a word for dismissal. And it can mean cessation of war. Uh, when um, Joshua made peace with the Gibeonites, when they uh, pretended to be someone that had come from a long, far country, and because Joshua and the Israelites were conquering everything around them, so the Gibeonites got wind of it, and they were afraid, so they pretended to be somebody who they weren't. And Joshua made peace with them. So it can deal with cessation of, cease of war. Uh, it can mean friendship between uh, companions. It's found in uh, Genesis and in Isaiah. It also means friendship 
with God through a covenant. Friendship with God through a covenant. I'm dealing Old Testament right now. And um, when Phinehas had a real zeal for the Lord, and uh, there's a couple that was caught in adultery, and he came to kill one with that zeal, and God commended him and, uh, for his zeal for the Lord. And he said, I give him my covenant of peace. So peace and deal with um, uh, friendship with God through a covenant. Um, <clears throat> contentment or anything working towards safety, welfare, and happiness is included in this idea. I'll, I'll say it again. Contentment or anything working towards safety, welfare, and happiness is included in this idea. Someone right, if you'll just look at someone right beside you and say peace. We, we, we need peace. We're living in a time where peace is not uh, available outside of God in the light of what I'm speaking of. So we can pause right now and think, thank God that we have access to peace. And someone's going to receive peace today from the Spirit of God. Peace. Uh, <clears throat> peace is, uh, let, me, let me read uh, what Isaiah 32, 17 says. Now, I, I won't ha have you to turn into these scriptures, but I'll turn to some of them and read them. Um, not all of them, but a few of them. Isaiah 32, 17 says, The work and the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Once again, Isaiah says, In this day, verse 15, when the Spirit be poured upon us, poured out upon us, the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Peace. Somebody say peace. This is what Jesus gives us. And he wants all of his children to have peace. To live in peace. To remain in a peaceful state, right? That precious gift of God's peace is available to us. Uh, peace has reference to health, prosperity, well-being, security, as well as quiet from war. I'm repeating myself deliberately, intentionally. Peace has reference to health, prosperity, well-being, security as well as quiet from war. Peace. That's what Jesus gives us. I am so glad that Jesus gives us peace. Hallelujah. In this troubled time that we're living in, when, when there's not much certainty, we can have peace. The Lord says in Isaiah 45, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. It is God given peace. Praise God. The people of the world that do not know God are living in a state of stress, turmoil, to say the least. But the believer should not be living like that. The believer has the gift of God's peace. God wants us to walk in it. Peace is so pleasing to the Lord that he encourages the godly to seek it diligently. Hallelujah. 
Psalm 34, 14 says, seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. Peace is to be a characteristic of the New Testament believer. Peace. There's a scripture found in 2 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. And it says, uh, verse 11, Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Notice it says he's the God of love and peace. Isn't it good to have a God of peace? Wow. He's a God of peace. So can he give us peace at any time? We need peace. We're living in a stress-filled society. But thank God for his peace. Praise God. In Mark, uh, let's see what Mark chapter 9 says. This is a little, just uh, taking the time to look into the word. We are to live by the word, right? Amen. Praise God. Mark 9. The Bible says, <clears throat> salt is good. This is what Jesus said. But if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Peace. As believers, we are to have that peace, and God wants us to walk in that peace. Peace is a comprehensive and valued gift from God. I say that again. Peace is a comprehensive and valued gift from God. And the promise, and, and he promised, and, oh, I'm sorry, and the promise and climaxing blessing in the Messianic times. And that's found also in Isaac 2. In, Isaac 2. in the New Testament, the word has reference to the peace which is the gift of Christ. And John 14, 7 said something that uh, I'll refer to a couple of times here because uh, I think it's going to be important what Jesus said. When he said, John 14, I'm sorry, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace is what God delights in our being partakers. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Good news, huh? Yeah. Philippians 4, what we read uh, today, says, um, we moved to so many scriptures, so. But he says, verse 7, and first he says, be careful for nothing or anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Peace is the precious commodity that God has given unto us. We must we should embrace what God has already given us. Christ died that we might live and have peace. Praise the Lord. So I'll refer to John again 
In my peace, I leave with you. That's what he said to his disciples. Now, remember, the disciples, uh, they were afraid, troubled, because of the words that Jesus had given unto them. But I'm going to go, but I'm coming back again. And your hearts, you know, you'll be worried and troubled now. And sorrows are filled in your heart, but uh, uh, you'll see me again. And then your joy is going to be fulfilled. Nobody will take that joy from you uh, when they see and understand more clearly the resurrection of Christ and why Christ came and what he left for us, the peace, the joy of the Lord. So, uh, <clears throat> I am glad that we can have peace. Thank you, Jesus. Peace also is used many times to express the truths of the mission, character, and gospel of Christ. Peace is used many times to express the truths of the mission, the character, and gospel of Christ. You've heard the gospel of peace, right? And it was referred to in the book of Acts, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. So peace, it was, it, it again, many times is a, expresses the truths of the mission of Christ, the character and gospel of Christ. Christ came into the world to bring spiritual peace with God. We find that, of course, as we read uh, in, the, in the Bible also. Uh, now, Luke 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 7 and 9. Now I'm going to back, go back to 76. Verse 76, uh, uh, the writer of Luke. Actually, Luke himself. Verse 76 it says, And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high had visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet, how? Into the way of peace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Peace, Jesus says, unto you. When Jesus popped on the scene after his resurrection, and they were huddled in the room together and so on, and the first thing Jesus did once he came through the doors or through the wall or whatever, he came, and then they all were so astounded and startled that he said, the first thing he said was, peace to you. And uh, because their hearts were frightened, they were troubled. All right, let's see. Christ's life depicted in the gospel is one of majestic, calm, and serenity. Christ's life projected in the gospel is one of majestic, calm, and serenity. Jesus says this, he says... Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn about me, right? Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And he said, you'll find rest or refreshing to your souls. You know, the soul can be in different states, right, and conditions. The soul can be cast down. The soul can be heavy and weary, frightened, and everything else. The soul can be troubled. But then he says, if you come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest for your souls. How many can appreciate soul rest? Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's, that's what Jesus did, does. But his life was so depicted in such a calmness, he didn't worry about a thing. He's sitting on the boat, in the boat there, and with the sea uh, was troubled, and the disciples wakes up and shaking, Master, get up, get up, Master, you, don't you, ain't you concerned that we, we about to be destroyed or perish? And, and so he gets up in here, and, and, and I can imagine him just taking a quick yawn. Hey, what's going on? Then he says, 
Why are y'all so afraid? Well, in the natural, it's a time to be afraid, right? But not with Jesus. He didn't have those fears, so he just turned around and says, peace, be still. Everything was calm. How would you like for Jesus to speak to your situation now? And just say calm. Or how would you like for him to speak to the anxieties, the inner turmoil, or the external turmoils and say, peace? And uh, I've got a, a, a list of things that God said in areas where he want to bring peace today. And, and you may find yourself in one of these conditions. If so, remember, there's a peace for you today. There's a reason for God. So I want you to stay tuned. Let the Lord have his way. I'm, I'm determined that the Lord, to, to, to be in a position to hear what the Lord is saying so that his people can get the relief that he wants. That's the care that God has for his children. The essence of the gospel may be expressed in the term peace. Preaching, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, the peace of, it, it includes the peace of reconciliation with God. Uh, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. And also the peace of fellowship with God. Philippians says, uh, you know, what we just read here, 4 7. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart. And uh, so God wants us to have this peace, brothers and sisters. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, right? Is it getting through to anybody yet? That's what God wants peace. We're living as Christians many times. Beneath our privileges. Sometimes we spend all day long, all week long, all month long, and sometimes all year long just living in subtle stress and anxieties. And the Lord doesn't want that to happen to us. That's why he gave this abundant life to us. It's available to us. And God wants us to walk in that. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. How many of us, the kingdom is ruling in our lives each day? Think about it. Is there the righteousness according to the righteousness of faith? Is there right living? Lining up with God? Is there peace in your life? Is there joy that Wanda talked about because of the Holy Ghost? Well, I, can I say to you that as we are led each day by the Lord, we will have that joy. We will have that joy because the Spirit of God produces the joy. It is the fruit of the Spirit. So if I, as I continue to listen and be led by the Spirit of God, it's going to bring peace and it's going to bring joy. Because the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit is joy. Hallelujah. He lead me to someone. Call them up and have a word of prayer with them. Call up and have a word of prayer. Healing comes or deliverance or whatever may come. And all of a sudden you hang up the phone. You feel so good. You feel the joy of the Lord. You're just ready to go and get another assignment. Why? Because you were led and you obeyed the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The life of God, the life of the spirit is a life of joy and peace. Hmm. I want you to look at someone and say, now, if you're not experiencing joy and peace, that means you must listen and obey the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is so true. The innumerable blessings of the Christian revolves around the idea of peace. Innumerable blessings of the Christian involves around, revolves around the concept of peace. 
the inalienable privilege of every Christian is peace with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my peace, I leave with you. I give it to you, not like the word give it. So you're in a situation and you just got peace. People don't understand it. Neighbors, co-workers are trying to figure out why are you always so calm? Why are you not stressing like everybody else? Well, it's who I knew. Right? And what he's imparted, somebody's saying, Lord, I need that peace. You can have it, right? Somebody said, well, Pastor, that ain't reality. Yes, it is. That's what God wants. That's exactly what God wants. If I'm not walking in peace, then God wants me to walk in peace. It's a gift, right? So I can't earn it, right? I can't be good to get it, right? It's a gift. It would not be a gift if I got to earn it. So, now with that in mind, everybody can receive peace that don't have peace. Right? Amen. We thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank you, Lord. Because of the legacy of peace left by Christ in his death, these blessings are not benefits laid up for us in eternal glory alone, but are a present possession. Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I can have that right now. You can have that right now. You don't have to wait till you get the glory to experience the peace that we're talking about today is for us right now. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We trust that the Word of God has richly blessed you. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHerring.com and let us know how the ministry of healing and restoration has affected your life. Also, for a donation of $20, we will send you a copy of the book, The Healing Station. God bless you, and we will see you next week.